Okay, so let's have a look in this video at how you can share either your iPhone or your iPad screen into Ecamm. So this is more about uh, sharing your screen. If maybe you're teaching Instagram and you want to be able to show that and you can't pull it up on a computer, maybe it's another app that is specifically to a phone or to a tablet that you want to be able to share here. Uh, so let's have a quick look and show you quite how easy this is to do. So. Uh, you can just use your power lead that comes with your iPhone. Uh, the, the connection on here is what you need. I've actually got uh, a longer cable because I want to be able to run it into my computer. So it's exactly the same fitting. Uh, it's just a two meter long cable. So I plug the cable in and I'll either see it come up here in the switcher or if I haven't got that on up here in cameras and it says 80s iPhone. You always won't say that of course, but uh, whatever you call your iPhone, it'll appear on here. Now, um, if you find that it doesn't appear and you've just got a little black box sitting there because it's happened to me, you need to just close down and open up again your phone. Just reboot your phone uh, and it will kick in again. So what might I want to share on here? Now, um, I'm just gonna demonstrate this um, Time Buddy app. So as you can see then, I can either bring this thing in on its own and it will stay in the format, the shape of my phone. Actually, if I rotate my phone, it'll go to the, the landscape view of it. And uh, I can use this and I can work through this on my phone. And uh, this is actually a, a good little app that I use all the time and a good example of how I would use um, needing to share my screen and my phone. Now, I, I wouldn't normally be doing it this way around. What I would typically do is have myself on camera first. And as you've seen then, as a picture in picture on this icon here, I can click the plus rather than to replace it. And now I can bring the picture in picture in of my phone and uh, it can come in like this. Now, as I say, it will stay in that format. Uh, be careful with this because uh, Ecamm will set this to the height. So look what happens when I flick this over. All of a sudden it's kept the same height, but it's meant that it's uh, totally filled my screen. So if I now want to bring that down, if I want it in landscape, What's gonna happen is it will use this height down here when I turn it back this way around, look. Um, so if you find that's jumping around a bit, uh, just kind of know first of all which way around you want this. So I might say, let's keep this up here and uh, I wanna be able to talk to you and uh, scroll through this and make changes and settings on it. Now I can go into my camera effects. Do make sure that you aren't on your camera but you're on your phone. And what you can actually do is hit this zoom and pan. And I can actually look in the same way that we could do it with our camera. I can actually zoom in like this. So again, maybe if I'm demonstrating something to you on um, say Instagram or, or another app and I wanna be able to really come in upon that area, uh, I can do that by just zooming in, zoom and pan on the camera effects. Now, as you've seen me say, um, we can turn off this camera feed as a picture in picture. Uh, what would this look like as a video overlay? So if I come down here and I select a camera overlay, I should say, not a video overlay, um, and I edit this and I can change one of the cameras to be AD's iPhone. Does it make any difference? Does it change anything around? Uh, as you're gonna see, <laughs> you could kind of have it as that circle there. It doesn't really do a lot for it. Um, you are gonna keep it really in the format that it comes in and all that is just put that extra space around it. So you're not tricking it or doing anything different. The only one reason you might want to do it this way around, if I went custom on here, um, it will let me zoom in on an area. It also lets me as a camera effect, if I were to come back to, let's just choose one of these others, let's say classic for now. Uh, what it does allow me to do is to pick this up from all four corners to resize it if I want to. So either picture in picture or using it as a camera overlay will let you bring in your phone screen like this. And I think that's probably the most typical way that you're going to want to use it. Let's have a look at the iPad now, because it's very much the same. And uh, I'll demonstrate on the iPad the, the way of flipping this around the other way so that actually your screen is behind you and you sit in front of it. It's probably more likely that you'd be doing it on the iPad than you would here on your phone. All right, so uh, I'm gonna disconnect this and 
away that goes. What I should have said to you as a tip, do make sure to turn your phone into do not disturb mode. I've actually been years without an iPad. Uh, the last time we did a tutorial in the academy, I borrowed Rachel's. I kind of thought, I've got a laptop, I've got a large phone, uh, why do I need an iPad? Um, actually, I went out and bought one, more so for the pencil tool on it. Really like it for the note taking. Um, and actually I'm finding more and more that I'm using my iPad and I know a lot of you guys have got them. So uh, let's show you this as well and see how you can use this. So let's have a look at the iPad then. Uh, different fit on this. We'll plug the cable in, should work the same way. Uh, it's popping up on here saying, do I trust this computer? Yes, let's trust it, asking me for my code. And then let's come up to our cameras and uh, look, there's 80s iPad, dead original with all these titles. And uh, as you can see, it's then sharing my screen and it will change depending on whether I go landscape or portrait like this. Uh, so why don't we bring something up? Maybe let's have a look at um, Filmic Pro. Let's imagine we were doing a tutorial on this. And so in comes my feed and I could in exactly the same way do a picture in picture. This is what I was suggesting is actually this time around, we come in the other way and instead of where on our phone, we were, let's pull that round reasonably close. <laughs> Where's the camera? Over there. <laughs> um, instead of where on our phone, we brought it in over the front of our image. This time around, we're sitting as a picture in picture over the front of the image that's coming in here. Because I think this might be more typical and uh, you know, I'm coming down here and I'm showing you different settings and features and how this works over here. And so we just wanna sit as a picture in picture over the front of it. Uh, now again, uh, the aspect ratio on this screen is would fit to the classic size of what we're doing in Ecamm rather than the wide. So what I can do on here again in camera effects, this time we're selecting the iPad and we can do the same thing and we can zoom that in. Now it's not going to fit because it is a different shape as I say. Um, so you could either zoom it in like this if you wanted it to fill it. So if you were doing more sharing the camera, but um, you could set it to come over here. In fact, what I would do, let's show you it a slightly different way around. I think I would start this with a blank scene and I would bring in two camera overlays. One being my picture in picture and I could uh, custom this so that uh, I can change the shape. And then let's bring in another one. And on this one, let's change the camera to the iPad. And again, if we select custom on here, we can adjust this and make sure it fits. Uh, but see what I'm doing? I'm thinking we can actually scale this up so that we know we've got that camera in. It's sitting over on the side there. And um, so remember what we were doing with this is that the overlays there, whatever is highest, will take priority. So because this one came in last, so we need to shift that up in that scene area. So now this one's on top. And because it's custom, we could do this. And uh, if we wanted to, it does make it very tall and thin. I don't know that that's ideal, but we could push it up there then maybe and sit up in that top corner while we're working away on our software. So actually that's probably if I were bringing this in uh, and sharing it this way and needing the app to fill that size, I would probably bring it in as two different inputs like this. Now one very popular use of this is with the pen, as I say. So let's come out of Filmic Pro and let's open up Good Notes and we'll do a new note. We'll start with a blank one and away we go. So actually this could go either way. Maybe I need to show that whole screen and I wanna get the navigation and things in or maybe I just wanna have the screen and uh, the, the space underneath it. So if I only want this uh, background on here, I can certainly first of all fill to the size of the window here. If I'm in a wide format, then I would select wide on here. And what I can do is with my mouse, I can stretch this so that it's filled the screen and then look under camera effects here. I can do this zoom and pan. So I'm trying to fill this to the whole window. If I were to click on custom and take that as wide as I can get it. And then over here under camera effects under zoom and pan, look, you see I can push that out now. And I'm, when I move this around, I can select just that middle area where I'm actually going to write. 
and I've got my picture in picture over here. We could do green screen if we wanted to and then we're totally cut out. But um, I can now write over here and do a presentation to you. Uh, maybe I'm doing my diagrams and I'm explaining how you get from there to here and <laughs> maybe actually I'm more likely to be um, explaining how you set something up and I'm showing how you need to connect your iPad over a cable here to your Mac. If that screen's slightly off there, I either need to just move that across in my camera. You get the idea. Uh, you, you, this becomes a really great place to do this as a virtual whiteboard. But these are a couple of ideas for this. Now, so far, this is it in its simplest form and we're just connecting it over a USB cable. Um, if we were to use a HDMI cable, like what we use when we bring our camera feed into the computer, it will actually let us do this as a presentation. So imagine you were standing on stage with your iPad and you were hooked up to a projector that was um, projecting on a screen behind you. It's basically the same thing over here. You've got two different options of how to set this up. This one is simpler, and if you just literally want to mirror what is on your screen, this works absolutely fine. So hopefully that has helped you. Um, I think this is a great tool. Loads of people love this. Uh, imagine an artist sitting here working away, creating something, sitting down the bottom here at the same time, seeing the comments coming in, talking away to people. I just think this could be a fantastic way to live stream. Or if you're a coach and you're used to having a flip chart on a whiteboard behind you, how great to do this virtually like this and just include yourself in the presentation. So again, have a play with this. Let us know how you get on with it and uh, really interested to see what you can come up with using these awesome features.